I'll try, says I'll make a feeble attempt. I will is absolute, non-negotiable, no matter what. To me, there's a very short line between learning and doing. Yes. And if you haven't done anything with what you learn, why are you getting more education? If someone crosses the, your line in the sand, it's because you never made your line deep enough. No one can ever go further with you than you've given them permission to go. Top 10, top I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. All my life, like nine out of nine. For my top 10, top 10, top 10, nine out of nine. This one's for my top 10. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you too. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. So get ready to celebrate your wins, serve yourself, and take radical action with Lisa Nichols and my take on her top 10 rules of success to give you the confidence, motivation, and belief that you need. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Dance in the dynamics of diversity. My mistakes now are seven figure mistakes. I'm not without errors now. Now there's seven figure errors. Trust yes. me. I've paid the attorneys. <laughs> but I'm but I'm still new terrain. Yeah. I'm the same woman I was at 25, at 28, at 30, new terrain. And so I began to explore what I didn't know. I surrounded myself with people who made me want to stand on my tippy toes. Yes. I surrounded myself with people who made me want to be a better woman. Not just in the money I made, but in the way I parented, and the way I showed up, and the way I looked at humanity. I began to be around people who who respected the color of my skin and my culture. Don't forget it. Don't say we're all the same because we're not. My journey isn't your journey because of the gender, the background, the origin, the religion. They're not the same. Right. So let's not act like we're all gray because we're not. But can I dance in the dynamics of our diversity? See, I began to hang around people who allowed me to dance in the, dy in the dynamic of our diversity and, and began to find ways where we can, we can both become better people because we sat together. I began to hang around old white men because they, and not every old white man, but older white men, because they seem to have had, had this conversation, this relationship to wealth and wealth management yes. that I didn't have. And I, I didn't, I didn't um, abandon my nationality, my culture. I want to go collect information so I can come back and open the door and keep the door open so we all can come through. Rule number two, celebrate your wins. Celebrate your wins. This is where I invited you to make a list of the 10 things that you have to celebrate about this past year. Now, if you're just joining me, then it's not too late. Make a list. You've done many more than 10 things, but make a list of 10 things that you have to celebrate about over this past year. And they can cover any area from family to finances, to business, to health and wellness, to relationships, to body, to fitness, anything. Rule number three, understand forgiveness. Let me first explain to you what forgiveness isn't. Because most people won't forgive because they have an incorrect understanding of what forgiveness is. So forgiveness is not pardoning someone's behavior. It's not excusing someone's behavior. Forgiveness isn't admitting that you were wrong. Forgiveness isn't saying what was done to me is okay. Forgiveness isn't any of those things. Forgiveness actually, if you really understand it, it has less to do with the other person and more to do with you and more to do with your future. Let's go back to the oil and water scenario. So forgiveness invites in love, invites in possibility, invites in prosperity. It invites in new thinking. It invites in creativity. So forgiveness is an expanding emotion. When you forgive, you're opened up for new things. Anger is a contracting emotion. It requires you to shut down, to avoid, to shut out, to stop talking. Everything in anger is about stopping and shutting down. Everything in about forgiveness is about opening up without pardoning someone's behavior. I wanna make sure I'm clear on that because most people attach forgiveness to, but you don't know what he did, but you don't know what she did. When you can detach, forgiveness is not about what they did. Forgiveness, get this, 
Forgiveness is about making yourself available. Think about you. your body is primary real estate. There's only so much of it. It's a finite, it's a finite space. There's only so much space. It's not forever, but it, this is your body. This, so if this is your primary real estate, if this is your primary real estate, your heart, and you're, you have anger occupying 20% of it, you can never experience 100% love. You can never experience 100% possibility. You haven't given yourself a chance at 100% of the things you want most because your primary real estate, your heart, your body, your mind is being occupied with a very intrusive, toxic emotion. Less and less about them. Nothing to do with them being right or their behavior being pardoned or the action. It's your, your future is paying for your past when you hold on to anger. So when you get really connected to the cost of anger, then it's not about the what. A matter of fact, the longer you've been angry, the longer you robbed yourself of 100% of what you were, were worthy of. And if someone's betrayed you, if someone's hurt you, then you over everyone deserve 100% love, 100% possibility, 100%, but it requires forgiveness. And in many cases, it's forgiveness of yourself. In many cases, the person you've been angry at the longest is yourself. And the same rule applies when it comes to you. Rule number four, serve yourself. We've been taught how to serve others, sometimes to the detriment of our own selves. Sometimes we serve others higher than we serve ourselves. At times we feel more comfortable with saying yes to other people and less comfortable saying yes to our own self-care. So I ask you, what is that about? It's about the opportunity to fall madly in love with you. The way you love those around you, to fall madly in love with your well-being, to fall madly in love with who you are when you get up from taking care of yourself. You, when you rise from a nap or you rise from um, uh, a spa day or when you leave the gym, to fall madly in love with that level of excellence. And when you do, what you'll do is give to everyone else around you a better version of you. So oftentimes we sacrifice our own well-being because we're being what I call the sacrificial martyr. And I know that was me. I would serve everybody else and everyone else would go, oh, I just don't have any time for Lisa. Well, that's the story we tell. I actually didn't believe that I deserve to have a day off. I didn't believe that I deserved to have a spa day. I didn't believe that I deserved to take a long walk on the beach. Something in me kept saying that I hadn't done enough. I hadn't achieved enough. I hadn't gotten far enough. So it actually had little to do with the people around me that I was blaming it on or using as my out. My child, my parents, my family, my community. It had to do with Lisa, giving Lisa the chance to actually enjoy the journey while still on it. Also, if you wanna have more confidence and self-love, check out my 254 series, they're free. The links to join are in the description below. We validate who we are by what we're doing for other people. It lands a little easier. I remember there was a time in my life when all I wanted was for people to accept me. You're gonna play ginormous, say ginormous. But first, take baby steps. Rule number five, take radical action. Joan Baez says, and my coach Susie Carter shared, first shared this with me, that Joan Baez says, the antidote for despair is action. So I said, how can I be in action? I was always looking to be in action. What else can I do? What else can I do? What else can I do? And then I go learn, and what else can I do? So to me, there's a very short line between learning and doing. Yes. And if you haven't done anything what you learn, why are you getting more education? You haven't even implied what you, yeah. like I'm a, I'm a hell of a coach now. It's like, like people who read a book and they don't go apply it, they just wanna read the next book. Right, hi. The book I read when I was in my deepest, darkest hour, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, changed my life because I got into radical action behind it. I was like, oh, oh, Stephen Covey talks about 
attending your own funeral, doing a visionary session where you attend your own funeral and there are four people to speak, what will those four people say about you? What kind of brother were you? What kind of friend were you? What kind of social change agent were you? What kind of neighbor were you? Man, when I did that exercise, I was like, oh, I'm a nice person, but I, I'm not getting the, they're not, they're not saying the things about me that I want to be saying. Right, yes. I'm writing my eulogy right now, Omar. I'm writing my eulogy. I'm writing my, I'm writing my legacy. I'm not just living for now. I'm living for the 40, year, 40 years from now story being told about me. I'm living for my grandchildren's 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 story about who great, great, great grandma was. And when you live for a lifetime, not just your life cycle, but a lifetime, you live for the legacy. I'm writing my legacy now. You won't sweat the small stuff anymore. You won't get caught up in gossip. You won't get caught up in, in living inside worry. You might worry, but worry does not have, worry does not have permission to take up real estate in your body. Worry is chased by solution and strategy. Yes, by action, yeah. And I always tell people, listen, I'll have every emotion like everyone else. I'll have fear, I have doubt, I have judgment, but you cannot take up real estate in my body. There's no lease options to buy in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> don't lease option it. buy in my mind and don't take up real estate. I got things to do. I got, I got changes to make and I'm not a super shero. I'm not, I'm an ordinary woman. I'm an ordinary woman who chooses every day to make one more extraordinary decision. Rule number six, acknowledge your community. Acknowledge your community. See, when you celebrate the people around you that bring you joy or that teach you some of the hardest lessons that you need to learn, the iron that sharpens the iron, the celebrators that celebrate you, those who hold the space for you and with you, pray for you, honor you, when you celebrate and lift them up, the whole tide rises. So I want you to find six people in your community, not out of obligation, but truly out of choice. They can be in your circle, in your family, in your business circle, and I want you to acknowledge them for the contribution that they bring to your life. What I love about acknowledgement is that when you acknowledge other people, it actually makes you happier. It's just this amazing gift of giving. And what I love is that most people would rather get an acknowledgement from you than a physical gift. That means they don't necessarily need the perfume, they don't need the sweater, they don't need the new iPhone, whatever. They want you to look at them in their eyes and say, you bring value, you bring value to my life. I honor you, I celebrate you, I appreciate you. Take time to have a personal moment with them where you're just seeing them. The number one reason why people feel sad and disconnected is because they say they don't feel seen. So in this acknowledgement, I want you to look into their eyes and acknowledge them for who they are and how they make your life better. When you raise the community around you, the entire tide rises, the energy rises, the joy rises, the expectation rises, and guess what? If you make this a part of your weekly habits with them, I didn't say daily, I didn't say monthly either, and I definitely didn't say annually, but if you make this a part of your weekly, find one thing to acknowledge at least six people in your community for each week. One, you'll feel, like, you'll feel much more excited, but all of a sudden there's a vibration that happens because you've created it. There's this energy of let's go do this because what gets celebrated gets repeated you want someone to repeatedly do something wonderful and amazing in your life, you repeatedly acknowledge them from a genuine place. Man, it's so powerful when you truly marry yourself to the acknowledgement process, to the practice of acknowledgement. When you get into the practice of acknowledgement, all of a sudden people will mirror back to you. You don't acknowledge to get it back. You acknowledge because you want people to be seen, but there's just this this dance that begins to occur that's absolutely delicious. Rule number seven, treat your relationships as a tennis match. Every relationship is a relay. It's like my dad's played tennis for over 40 years and, and I've attempted to play with him at times and what I realize is that relationships are like a tennis match. I hit the ball to you, you hit the ball back. And a relationship where you think it's only about one person, that's not tennis, that's racquetball. 
right? But a relationship is a tennis match. And so if a relationship is working, it's because of the way we both are engaging. If it's truly working. And if it's not working, it's the way we both are engaging. And so there could be passive engagement and there could be active engagement. So when you're not speaking up for what you want, when you're holding and you're living with a bunch of withholds, that's engagement. That's just the way you're engaging. So, so every relationship has two parts, whether your part is active or your part is passive. Every relationship has engagement, a level of engagement, and that engagement is on different levels. Rule number eight, make clear, concrete plans. I'll try says I'll make a feeble attempt. I will is absolute, non-negotiable, no matter what. There's a certain energy that goes forth when you say I'll try, and there's a different energy that goes forth when you say I will. When you make the declaration of I will, that says mountain, if you are there, you must move. I'll try says I hope I got enough energy to make it up or around the mountain, and if not, I'm gonna sit at the bottom of the hill. When you fail to make a plan, okay, well, hold on. This might hit you between the eyes. You know I love you. But when you fail to make a clear, concrete plan that has goals and milestones, meaning there's smaller goals that you can hit to get to the bigger goal, and has a by-when date, not in February, not in August, but August 15th by 5 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, when I set a goal, I even want to know the time zone I'm going to have it done by. Clarity. When you fail to make a plan with clear distinction, when you fail to make a clear plan, you have clearly planned to fail. I'll say it again. When you fail to make a clear plan, then you've clearly planned to fail. I know that hits you hard. I've done it many a times. I have clearly planned to fail many a times because I had an idea and it was just in my unconscious. I didn't know. Now I want to bring to you what I know to you so you know it. I want you to make a clear plan. When you create a clear plan, then you're clearly planning to succeed. Rule number nine, understand your belief system. Your belief systems were handed to you by your parents yep. and by your grandparents, and they were pretty much embedded by the time you were 10 years old. So there's some beliefs that you didn't even have a chance to develop for your own. You just are living them out. You inherited them. You yep. inherit the and belief didn't even system know it, yeah. and didn't unconsciously inherited them. And so the good news is you get to choose to the belief systems you like, and then you get to divorce. I'm going to say divorce because that's a strong word. We all know what separation looks like when you say divorce. <laughs> you get to divorce from a belief system that doesn't serve you any longer. A belief system that says money is the root of all evil, maybe. Or a belief system that says only rich people uh, have money or all rich people are, are, are uh, crooks. Or the, I used to, my belief system used to be that wealthy people aren't spiritual. Mm, that if I'm yeah. wealthy, I can't be a spiritual person. You have to pick God or money. One or the other. I got to pick, pick my faith or, or my finances. I can't have both. That's a belief system. And, and I invite you to divorce it because it's not the case. I have both. And I live in both quite well. I use my money for good in the world. And the more good, the more money you have, the more good you'll do if you're a good person. So money makes you more of who you are. So you will only be more of who you are with money. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is set healthy boundaries. When we talk about setting healthy boundaries, again, and I know it sounds as if I keep going back to the same thing, but setting healthy boundaries is not about you keeping other people out. If someone crosses the, your line in the sand, it's because you never made your line deep enough. No one can ever go further with you than you've given them permission to go. So as hard and as difficult as it is to hear, because this was hard for me to hear when I had to admit it to myself, that the way people treated me was based on how I trained them to treat me. So I have to say it to you. You've trained people to treat you the way they're treating you. So if people are crossing your boundaries because they didn't know it was there. If people call you at odd hours of night, it's because you keep answering. If people ask you to do beyond what you're able to do, it's because you keep saying yes. If people don't ever think you need rest, it's because you act like you don't need rest. I know this is not probably what you want to hear, but I signed up and you signed up in this relationship to give you what you need to hear, not necessarily what's always easy to hear. And I'm only telling you what I needed to hear myself. I'm only telling you the lesson that I had to learn, that we train people how to treat us. Now I've got a special bonus tip from Lisa on how to control your emotions that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Let's go from just watching a video to taking action here we go. 
Question number one, what are three healthy boundaries that you need to set? Number two, how can you better acknowledge your community? And number three, what's a recent win that you can celebrate? And if you made it this far in a video and you are committed to making a change, I wanna celebrate you. Give me a hashtag, believe down in the comments as well. When you ask the question, how do I overcome anger when I've been angry for so long? First, admit that you're tired of being angry. Because something is familiar doesn't mean you like it. And a lot of times we get resigned in a familiar emotion. Just because it's familiar doesn't mean it's the emotion of choice. It doesn't mean it's the familiar doesn't mean favorite. It just means familiar. And so if you're willing to exchange your familiar emotion for a, 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 an emotion of possibility, an emotion that you deserve, an emotion that you want more, then you will, separate from the person, you will redesign your relationship with anger in and of and by itself. If you want 10 more rules from Lisa Nichols, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Success is not rocket science. You go and find the thing that you don't know, learn the thing you don't know and do the thing you haven't been doing and get the life you say you want.